Okay, let's take a look at um, this equivalent production problem using the FIFO costing method. Now, the information uh, appears in the shaded area, and I'll read that to you. Cunningham Paper Corporation produces wood pulp that is used in making paper. The following data pertain to the company's production of pulp during September. Okay, so what we have is that um, at the at the beginning of the period, right, or at the end of August 31st, work in process was 40,000 tons. Um, it was 100% complete concerning the direct material components, and it was 60% complete con concerning the conversion costs. Now, 250,000 tons were placed into production during September, and uh, at the end of the period, September 30th, there were 80,000 tons left in work and process that were 100% complete pertaining to the d direct material component and 40% complete relating to conversion cost. And we're asked to compute the equivalent units of production for direct materials and conversion cost for September using the FIFO costing method. Okay, I've got the schedule set up right before us, so let's give that a try. Cunningham paper, there's our title, FIFO costing method for the month ending September 30th. We lay out a schedule of the physical units and then we will compute the equivalent units for direct material and conversion costs. So the first thing we need to do is drop in beginning inventory. And the beginning inventory amount was equal to the 40,000 tons given. Then we need to account for units started this period. So we'll put that in. And the unit started was equal to the 250,000. Now, once we have that, then we're able to compute the units to be accounted for. Okay, so the total units we need to account for um, are equal to, where's my sum key? Right there. It highlights the right ones. 290,000 units. All right. Then we need to break it out into the various components to determine equivalent units. So we first take the pool that was made up of beginning inventory. Okay, and beginning inventory was the 40,000 units. And if they were 100% complete, um, um, then in terms of equivalent units that were produced during September, it's going to be 0%, right? The effort occurred in the prior period not during September. But with conversion cost, it was 60% complete. So we know that it would be equal to 100% less the 60% or 40%. You could do that in your head, obviously. Okay, so we had... Four, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this should be over here. Let me move that over there. And that one's a merge cell, so of course that's not going to work. Equal 100% minus that 60% and that'll show up as 40%. Now once we have that, we would take the 40,000 units times the 40% complete to come up with the number of units. And once I have this formatted correctly, it'll be 16,000 equivalent units. Okay, then we need to consider the second layer, if you will, of inventory, or the second pool of inventory, which is units started and completed. You may also consider that the second category. So we have what was in beginning, then we have what was unit started and completed, and finally what was in ending. So we have the 250,000 units. Okay, now I've put 250,000 as units and started completed as equal to what was placed in production, but that's not true. What we need to know is uh, units and started, com started and completed would have been equal to 250,000 less what was in ending inventory. So let me drop in the ending inventory, which is given as 80,000. That way, what was units started and completed would have been equal to the 250 less the ending inventory. And that comes out to be 170. See how that works? We know that the beginning was completed. We know that there was 80 in ending inventory. So therefore, we need to compute what was started and completed. Okay, now if it was started and completed during the current per period, then 100% of the equivalent units apply, and we can just jot in 100% in both columns. And 
then we could multiply that times 100%, which of course you don't need to do. You could just copy the number over. But uh, to be consistent, I'll do it. 170,000 times 100%. And there's our equivalent units for units started and completed. Now, in ending inventory, they told us that 100% of the direct material component was completed. And if you think about a, a, a process where the material gets entered right when it starts, that would make sense. 100% of the material applied as soon as we entered it into production. So that equivalent units, again, is going to be equal 100%. But in terms of the ending inventory, they tell us that only 40% of the conversion costs were completed. Okay, so I'm going to do that multiplication again, which gets us 80,000. And we do the multiplication here. I'm just copying down. And it gets us 32,000, 80 times 40%. Once we have that, then we need to make sure we've, we've taken care of all the units accounted for. And uh, if we've done this correctly, it should be equal the units to account for. And sure enough, that 290 equals that 290, so we've done it correctly. And now we just sum from above to come up with our total equivalent units. So 250,000 for direct materials, and uh, all this is formatted the wrong way. Uh, we have 212 and 02. Let me see if I can format this to get that to line up right. Boy, it just does not want to uh, format. So let's unmerge this. And uh, that looks better. Okay, now the sum pulled from the percentages too, so we're off a little bit. Let me slide up a little bit. This should be M30 to O30 to O. Boy, it doesn't want to work at all. To, to M32, I said that incorrectly. And once we do that, we get the 218. Let me slide back down. And that's the correct values. Okay, thank you, everyone.